often it feels like God is silent. And as a Christian entrepreneur, being able to deal with the fact that God seems to be silent all the time is hard. We pray for wisdom, we pray for smarts, we pray for people who will lift the burdens with us. We pray for funding, God, man, like, please. Usually it feels like he's silent, if I had to be really honest about it. One thing that we've understood now, and I think we understand, is that God is there. He might not be saying anything at the moment, or we can't hear it, Him saying it's something at the moment, but that promise that He is there, and that, that, that sense that He is there, I think is enough for us. There was definitely time that I felt extremely nervous, and there were times that I felt exhausted. And both Sonny and me, as husband and wife, we were constantly challenged, and we were doing things that we were not yet qualified for. When we first started Misfit, it was really just Christy and I starting in our apartment, and at the time, wearables was really hot. And the angle we took was, instead of focusing on fitness, endurance sports and whatnot, we went after fashion something that was beautiful, something that people would want to wear all of the time. It was really fashion-focused, very design-oriented, and I think, you know, we won the following. good software engineers out of Vietnam. And in the beginning, Sunny was only planning to have a common high-tech startup out of Silicon Valley. But at one point, I encouraged him to try and uh, set up a software engineering team in Vietnam. Everyone thinks we came to Vietnam because of money, because it was cheaper here, cheap labor. And if it really was that, it wouldn't actually make sense to come to Vietnam. You know, we be better off, I don't know, going to Russia or Ukraine, or just having a smaller team altogether in the Bay Area. You know, you just move faster, right? But we came here because of the attitude. We were probably the first in town who believed in the capability of the people here who can do R&D work, the real R&D work. Yeah, there's a cost advantage, but you know, I mean, when you factor in all of the midnight calls and trans-Pacific flights and the jet lag, I'm not sure it's, uh, the cost is worth it, to be honest. But the attitude and the working spirit, that's worth it. We had a number of values which we kept for a long time. Do more with less. Think before you talk. You know, listen. Be a misfit. You, know, you got to do things differently. And then we added servant leadership. It was very nice sounding. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm a servant leader. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm gonna serve my team, yeah. And it's like, great, we got lunch catered. Um, you're gonna be the last in line, right? Because you're the most senior person in the company. Um, if you get upgraded to business class, are you gonna give up that seat for the intern that you're traveling with? Because that's what's expected. It's not even a nice thing to do. It's just, you're just supposed to do that. Oh, um, yeah, I don't know, let me think about that. It was some time until we realized the when we reflected on all of the all of some of the best people we had. Um, what was the common thing that was, that they all shared that we loved about them, that made them so unbelievably productive, so trusted? I think it really kind of comes down to this notion of self-sacrifice, because if you have people who are inherently giving, who watch out for each other, who watch out for another person before themselves, but who will watch out for the company and the resources before them, there's nothing that you wouldn't give them. There's nothing that you wouldn't entrust them with. And after three and a half years, we built it out to nearly 240 people, and we were acquired by Fossil Group. My life is my work, and my work is my life. 
I enjoy the work that I'm doing is a big part of my life, and my life is dedicated to work too. I wouldn't want the purpose of work to be just to find a bunch of money so we can donate to a church. I'd be missing a very important part of why I'm doing what I'm doing. If the why can be very intrinsic to what I'm doing, that what I'm doing is the worship. Business is the way that I express the faith that I have. It cannot be separated from life, and because of that, God has to be there. They say one of the most important attributes to have as an entrepreneur is your ability to deal with ambiguity. I think what people really mean is the ability to deal with uh, abject failure again and again and again. Look, all sorts of stuff happens, and sometimes it feels like out of no reason in a startup. Key people leave, huge competitors enter your space. All sorts of things happen to you, and in many of those moments, you think, oh my God, why is this happening? Why would you let this happen? But in the quiet of our rooms, when we reflect and seek Him, I feel like we're reminded that He is there. That that has given us the energy over the years to keep going. For my journey with Misfit, I rarely stop to think about success anymore because the only thing that I kept in my mind was holding God's hand and keep going. And now. I just think of the day when I see God again, and uh, I just hope that at that day God will be pleased. I don't know if I can do it, but that's the single most important thing. <laughs>